Finding your niche as a physician on this episode of Bootstrap MD. Hey guys, welcome again. This is Dr. Mike Luming with Bootstrap MD. Today we got a really special treat. As you know, we had a incredible conference for physician entrepreneurs called Bootcamp MD. We had some amazing speakers. These were doctors who are, work less than part-time but have a full-time income, and they were really there to share their knowledge. And right now we're in the promotion of that. We're actually going to be raising the price soon, but I wanted to give you guys a flavor of what the event was all about. And on this special episode, I basically took a recording of a topic that is really near and dear to my heart and a question I get asked a lot, and that's about how can I find a niche? What's the best way that I can kind of find my area of expertise and then start selling products and services to the world? So I wanted to give you guys a sneak peek of what the Bootcamp MD was all about. So without further ado, here's we're going to talk about finding your niche. How many people have found their niche already? You know what they know what they're doing. How many have not found their niche or how many have like two or three ideas and Think of the way to go. Okay, so I really want to use this to kind of hone in, you know, your niche. Um, personal interest. You know, start a business. What do you have personal interest in? I talk about Himalayan cats, but I'm not personally interested in them. Sorry. Um, Here's the other important thing. You want to do something that you like, but you have to also understand who are your customers? You know, who are your customers? Um, and then you, like, I think our psychiatrist left. So then you psychiatrist? Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna, you know, I don't want to, I gotta, okay. I'm not gonna start the bipolar physician expert group, okay? <laughs> That's not my thing, okay? <laughs> Not saying anything's wrong, but I probably am not going to deal with those type of clients on there. But I like working with doctors, you know? I like working with, with professionals. I like working with physician assistants and mid-level providers. So I, I think about who, who do I work with, you know? I'm probably not going to work with attorneys, you know? Uh, my attorney isn't here, so that's good. But you know, think about when you're starting a business, who do you want to work with there? Um, you know, you know my friends. They work with physician moms a lot. Mm -hmm. They like to work with f moms or physicians, and they, they, there is a kinship there, right? Whatever that is, you need to think about who do you want to work with. You know, if you're a pediatrician and you hate kids, <laughs> we, we got a disconnect here, right? You know, unless you're a pathologist, you generally like patients, right? You know, can you always tell who the pathologists were in the medical school? You know. <laughs> You know, does it energize your batteries? Does it answer your why? You know, you know your why. And you know, here's something that they don't teach you medical. Is it fun? You know, how many times did someone went to you especially because they thought it was fun? Not many, not many people ask you that. But that's the great thing about being an entrepreneur. You know, you have so much opportunity. You can go whatever direction. You missed all my psychiatry jokes, by the way. Sorry, it's okay. <laughs> Um, so what do you have personal interest in? What do you have personal knowledge in? Are you an expert? What are you an expert in doing? What is something that you know, like the back of your hand, like you could teach other people to do? And again, as Eric was saying, it's just one step higher than anybody else, you know? Can you speak their language? Why I like physicians working with um, working with other physicians is, you know, I can tell these jokes, you know, and you guys kind of sort of laugh, not really, but you understand what it is, you know, when, when, when someone was coming and they read my sales letter, they say, hey, you really spoke to me. A lot of things that you said in your, your, your sales letter really appealed to me, and that's why I purchased your product, because I, I understand what they're going through. I got, went through the burnout. I went through, um, you know, dealing with colleagues that, or uh, other people that I work with that may have not have the best interest for me, and they understand that. Um, if you don't know, 
can you get access to experts uh, in their niche? You know, Eric will be talking tomorrow. He says he might not have all the answers to everything, but he can connect you with people. And that can be very powerful. You know, that can be very, very powerful. If you don't know the answers, hey, I don't know who is great in such and such, but I know my friend John here, or something like that, who could put you in touch. Um, and you know, these are the kinds of things that you need to be you know, looking at. Um, because what happens is, you guys remember Larry King? Remember Larry King? Would you consider him an expert? No, but he was able to position himself where he interviewed really interesting people. But then they, they chose him as someone that they could trust because he brought in people that he trusted. That makes sense? So even if you yourself aren't an expert, if you can provide access to other experts, it's where you could really take advantage of it. A history of success. How many people have heard the phrase, you know, to have a successful business, you need to follow your passion? How many people have heard that? Okay, I think that's actually crap, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, I'm saying it with, with, with an asterisk. You can follow your passion, but if it doesn't make you any money, yeah. well, why do it? You know, you know. I'm a big fan of Britney Spears, okay? All right? I admit it. I don't, hey, we're friends here. I can tell you, you know, different songs, but are people going to pay me for my knowledge of, you know, when, uh, what year Toxic came out? It was 2002, but is anybody really going to pay me for that information? No. It's got to make money, right? So I gave you examples is, you know, some examples that I gave you, like the, the Two Comma Club website. Uh, another one that I checked besides Inc. 5000 is Biz by Sell. So this is a site where you can actually see businesses that are being sold. So when I started my, these are physical businesses, when I started my uh, different clinics, I wanted to see what type of clinics that were, that were actually being um, sold and what were they being sold for. And one of the reasons that I didn't go into a conventional insurance-based clinic was what it was being sold was basically pennies on the dollar. Because most, uh, I don't want to get into a tangent, but most, if you're a sole primary care doctor is, the only way they're being sold is being sold to the hospital. But, you know, it didn't, it didn't really have any intrinsic value because all they really had were the patients that were brought in by the insurance companies. There wasn't anything that they had special that wouldn't differentiate me from starting a, the same type of clinic. You know, there's no reason for me to pay you a million dollars for this clinic because I can get the same patients. Does that make sense? But a cash-based clinic, you know, is something where there is value in it because these are people who have paid money for it. That's not, that's, you know, it's much, when I sell my clinics, whenever that day comes, I understand is I have an asset because it took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to build up my patient population. That's going to actually be worth something as opposed to, you know, an insurance-based clinic. But the reason why I found that out is I looked at what are the clinics you're selling and what are they selling it for? Because I went into, I looked into other types of medicine and I wanted to see which one had the most value. Profit margins, we talked about it. How much is it going to cost to deliver my product? Again, I told you about information. I talked about information. You know, even if you start like an e-commerce business, you do have to pay something for that product. So there is some money that you're actually going to be spending. As opposed to content, what I love about you know content is just I can talk into a microphone or I can write or whatever I use, and I can use it to sell that. You know, turn a DVD that costs ten dollars to twenty-five hundred dollars simply by sharing that information. You know, again with the internet, everything is is worldwide. You know, and allows you to reach people. And this is an important thing that a lot of people think about. Is it a barrier to entry? Is there a barrier to enter that market? So, you know, I always, um, 
I go on some of the, the physician Facebook groups and sometimes I have to kind of like mute myself because I'll say something that I don't mean to discourage people in doing it, but they'll say something like, hey, I want to start up, uh, I want to take a class on Botox, okay? And I'm going to do this on the side. And, you know, they have all these, they're really excited about doing this Botox because they want to do it on their side, they're, they're tired of this, and they, they found a course that they can take on a weekend. Well, that sounds well and good, but if you want to do a clinic on Botox, you're not the only person who can do Botox, right? You can have nurses do it, you can have mid-level providers do it. But is there something that you can do to, to differentiate yourself? And so, you know, I see the same thing. They want to start like an IV drip clinic. Great, so does everybody else wants to do that too. But there's no barrier to entry in doing it there. If there's some way that you can differentiate yourself, you know, doing it, well maybe there is something that you could do. Let's say you want to, you guys know what IV drips, this is kind of the new thing. They, they come in in San Diego, they have a van, and people get hung over, and then they do these IV things, and they charge a bunch of money. It started in Vegas, okay? It's been around, but I see like a post every now and then they want to start this type of business. But so does everybody else, you know, in that business. Um, so you need to find yourself, what can I do to differentiate myself that would be different? Than anybody else. It could be first mover advantage, maybe you're in an area where it's not being done, that could be one. Maybe you're doing an exclusive uh, community, whatever that is. Maybe you've got some specific IV treatments that are, that are, that, uh, are very unique, for different properties, whatever that is. There has to be some type of barrier you know, to entry. And can you get a competitive advantage over somebody else? So anytime I'm looking at, at starting something, I'm looking, what can I differentiate myself in? But that's why I said, physicians, you guys have a unique advantage if you're ready to start something out because um, you know, other, unless you're at the America's, what was it, America's body? Mind, body, heart, and soul. Yeah, unless you're at America's mind, body, heart, and soul doctor, there's still these other areas that you can go into, right? Um, it, you, but again, it's about branding yourself, and, and this, to be honest, is about first mover advantage right now, too, is the one who has the loudest megaphone is the one who's gonna win. Um, so, when you're creating your products, and you're creating what you want to do, we start about information. We've talked about creating articles. And, and, and that such. Um, let's see, where am I gonna go on this one? I think I kind of talked about that. You start with an introductory product. It could be an ebook that you sell for like 19 to $29 or an online course. Um, you, an introductory product is I think anything between like $9 to like 297. A core product could be a, a workshop, a membership site, group coaching, a premium product. And that shows you like 997 to 1997, or a premium product that's anywhere between you know 5,000 to 10,000 dollars. When you're looking at um, a niche that you want to get into, let's say your goal is to make 10,000 dollars a month. Could be interested in making an extra $10,000 a month, okay? Why I don't like the book model, ebook model, is if your goal is to sell, make $10,000 a month, and you're selling a $20 ebook, how many ebooks do you have to sell a month? A lot. You guys are bad at math, <laughs> right? I'm Asian, so I'm really good in math. I guess I said it. No, I'm not good. You're going to sell 500 books, right? That's a lot of books. Per month. Per month. All right? Yeah, all right. Okay. Live Himalayan cats. Live Himalayan cats. That's a lot. Okay. It's much easier, but is it, can you find somebody, how, instead of having to deal with 500 people, deal with 10 people? Can you sell them something $1,000 per month? So whatever your market is, is there something that you could do 
for $1,000. Or if you're really good, five people for $2,000 a month. Now it's not as hard. You might think it's hard because maybe you have that value in there. It's $1,000, but what can you do? What can you do? Are you you're looking up the numbers? Confirming my math? OK. <laughs> Is there something that you can do that people would pay you $1,000 today? Are there people who, when you guys work in your clinics, how much are they paying for your services? You know, what are procedures costs, okay? You know, what are you doing? When I was in family practice, I was the flex sig king. You know what the flex sigs is? Are you still okay? All right. Do you know how much cost a flex sig cost? I don't know. Let's say it's $1,000. You know, there. But why do they pay that? Or the insurance paid it so they don't really see the value of it. But they're doing it because they're trying to improve their health, right? They're providing along. Our, you know, we have people that come in our clinic who pay us over $1,000 for whatever it is, whether it be getting, uh, you know, uh, fillers or whatever, um, IV treatments, weight loss, whatever. Because to them, it doesn't mean they want to improve whatever that is. And um, the way that you establish your authority allows you to charge for higher prices. So let me give an example. Um, if somebody came in and they saw their fairly practice doctor, they say, I want to lose weight, OK? You know, you probably won't even talk about it for the most part, but maybe he'll write them a prescription for a, a diet medication or fentamine or something like that, okay? And then he's on her way. My friend, who's also a doctor, has a um, weight loss clinic, but he charges $2,500. So what did he do that was different? Well, he has a book on weight loss. He's been seen on PBS and has an infomercial there. Um, he's a, a, a chef. He's at Santa Barbara. But what's the difference? He didn't go and he didn't get like double board certified in obesity medicine, I don't think. He branded himself. And now patients come to him. They'll fly in from the East Coast just to visit with him, right? You know, if someone came and saw me for, when I was in primary care and they had anxiety, and I write him a prescription for Xanax, you know, how much do I make on that, right? I just don't make anything, right? I just make, I get paid per hour, right? But it's probably cost, you know, a few bucks that I'll make on that. But down the street, down in uh, Del Mar, I believe it's where it is, um, anybody hear of uh, Deepak Chopra, okay? So he sells a $5,000 to $10,000 wellness retreat to help you with anxiety, OK? What's the difference? His brand. His brand, exactly. He established himself as the authority. And he'll probably get, yeah, and he'll probably get better results than me writing a prescription for Xanax, right? But it all comes down to establishing your authority, and I don't care how old you are or where you are in your position, anybody uh, can do this. You just have to understand is, if you are compelled that you've got something that could help people, you can provide people a value, start thinking about things that you can charge. It's okay to charge what you're worth. We always devalue ourselves as doctors. You're nodding your head, Marie, because it's true. We do devalue ourselves. So I hope you guys liked that. Give me a little bit of flavor about what the seminar was all about. If you guys want to hear more about it and want to get access to the over 11 hours of recording of this incredible event, just go to bootcampmd.com slash online. And if you, at the time of this recording, we're doing a discount for that, but you have to go to that website and that website only, bootcampmd.com slash online. It's me with over six speakers there, just sharing information with other physicians because without physicians helping other physicians, you know, if we, if we didn't have that, maybe we wouldn't be in kind of the predicament where we are with medicine today. So again, go to bootcampmd.com slash online to pick up your copy of it today. So again, hope you guys have an incredible weekend and as always, keep moving forward.